iTunes then says, Well, Baldy talks about you all the time, saying you're always busy or not in the mood to talk, but he also says that when you do talk to him, that it's either very serious or the one time you actually were in the mood to talk to him and how it was wonderful to talk to you. <laughs> so I guess he was just being trying to be nice because he does uh, love you. Steve smiles but also looks sad. I'm sorry, Baldy thinks of me as being busy all the time. Or being too serious. Or, the one time we did have a wonderful time together, I wish I was always in the mood to talk to him. Just to have a wonderful time with him. I just want to talk with him because even if my day is busier, I'm trying to deal with so much stuff. I just want him to feel loved. Toons then says, That's true. Anyways... I saw you grab party supplies. Are you having a party anytime soon? She smiles sweetly. And then Steve then smiles and says, Yeah, I'm having a party tonight. I'm surprised Baldy didn't tell you about it. But you're definitely invited, Toons. Toons gets really happy and says, Thank you. I'm glad I'm invited. This is wonderful. You should probably get to that party then. I'll do the same. Later. Steve nods. Yeah, this party is something important I need to take care of. So I need to hurry up and get there and make sure everything is perfect. Be but before I go, it was nice chatting. So maybe I'll see you there. Toons then says, I hope so too. Bye. Toons waves goodbye to Steve and Steve does the same. Okay, bye. It was nice meeting you and I hope to see you later. Steve smiles and waves at Toons as she leaves. As he leaves the store to go to work, go work on the party and prepare everything. Steve arrives home and gets to work setting everything up and getting ready for the party. He puts all the foods, drinks, and decorations where they are meant to be so everyone can enjoy the party. Alright, I'm done with everything and everything is ready. Now all I gotta do is sit back and watch everyone enjoy themselves tonight. Steve chuckles to himself and waits for everyone he invited. Soon he hears a knock at the door. Steve walks over to the door and answers it. Hello there, Toons. Glad you could make it. Toons and Baldy walk in. Hey, Toons and Baldy. Glad you both could come. So the party is almost ready. Want to go look at everything I have set up? Steve smiles sweetly and opens the living room door to reveal the living room having snacks, music playing, and some balloons. Steve then says, I hope this all looks okay and that you both enjoy the party I had got planned. Steve is now waiting for one more guest. His old friend, Stefan. Baldy's brother, Ronnie, Bavsty, and Baldy Games are now downstairs, sitting in the living room. Felix, however, is still upstairs playing Minecraft like always. Everyone is now sitting down at the party table, chatting in the living room. Alright guys, all that's left is for Stefan to arrive. So what are we going to do while we wait? Steve smiles at them, wondering what to do while they wait for Stefan to arrive. Why don't we play Truth or Dare while we wait? It'll be fun, Baldy suggests. Sure, Bafsi cheers and says, I love playing Truth or Dare. Let's play it. Baldy smiles softly and says, okay, let's play. Everyone else in the room smiles sweetly and nods. A few hours later, Stefan is still not at the party and seems to have been late. Steve realizes Stefan didn't arrive and it is now nighttime. Steve worries and says, Why isn't Stefan here yet? I wonder if he got up caught up with something that stopped him from coming. Maybe I should call him. Steve picks up his phone and calls Stefan's number a few times, but it keeps going to voicemail. Why didn't he answer? I'm starting to worry, Steve says to himself. Toons then speaks up and says, he might have been busy today or something. Baldy also speaks up saying, Yeah, Toons might be right. He could be. Yeah, that might be it, Steve says. But I'll worry until he gets here, or if he calls me or texts me. I'm glad all of you showed up, but I do wonder why Stefan isn't here yet. I don't know. Maybe I'm worrying too much. Steve chuckles. After the party, Toons goes home. And Steve is still upset. Now even more because Stefan didn't arrive. 
Steve looks at the clock and sees that it's already late. And he worries. I wonder where Stefan is. He was supposed to be at the party. I just hope he's okay. He hasn't even texted me or anything. Steve is worried and then decides to go to bed. Hours later, Ronnie, Jenny, and Baldy are talking about each other's interests. Babsty is sitting down, listening as they talk. My favorite animal is a cat, Jenny says. I like dragons, Ronnie says. Baldy then speaks. I like dogs. Everyone smiles and nods, and then Baldy asks Babsty. Hey, Bav, what's your favorite animal? Everyone's curious and looks at him curiously. Babsty then smiles and says, Uh-huh. I think I like rabbits. They're so cute. Bav smiles sweetly and everyone giggles. They are pretty cute, says Baldy. Bavsty then says, I also like cats. Ronnie then says, All right, how about what do you plan in your future? Baldy then speaks, I plan to be the best math teacher there is because I love math. Ronnie nods saying, That might just happen. I plan to be an art teacher for his school. How about you, Jenny? Jenny smiles sweetly, saying, I plan to be a veterinarian, because I love animals and I want to help them. Baldy's eyes go wide and he says something. That's nothing to do with math, school, or learning. That's dumb! Why not have a better job than that? Ronnie then gets upset at Baldy and yells at him. Baldy, that's your sister, and you can't respect what she likes. So what if it's not math? I didn't pick to be a math teacher. What's your deal? Steve is trying to sleep, but hears yelling, and he gets up and listens in on the conversation on Baldy with Baldy and Ronnie. Oh no, what's going on? What did Baldy do now? Steve thinks to himself. Steve listens in to see that Baldy said that being a math teacher is better than being a veterinarian and being an art teacher. Ronnie gets upset and yells at Baldy. Baldy doesn't like that, though. Gets mad at Ronnie for what he said. Instead of just accepting that Ronnie likes art more than math... Bafsty sneaks out the front door because he doesn't want to be around Baldy and Ronnie while they're arguing. It upsets him. Steve wonders where Bafsty is going, but decides to listen to Baldy and Ronnie argue. The yelling's getting louder. Steve is wondering if she, he should interfere, but he doesn't. He listens to see how the argument plays out. Bafsty is crying and runs outside into the street. Steve's eyes go wide. He hears the crying of Bafsty, but he ignores it and continues to listen to the argument. Why is Baf crying? Why is he running away for? Steve thinks to himself as he listens to the argument. He thinks about what will happen as the argument seems to be getting worse. Baldy's getting mad and Ronnie doesn't seem to want to stop. Steve is worried, but can't help but ignore Bafsty's crying. Bafsty is still running, but suddenly a dark red car is driving very fast down the street. Bafsty screams and is hit. His last sight was the headlights. The noise of the argument makes Steve's ears drown out. Bafsty screaming and he doesn't hear anything outside. Not even the red car coming. Steve is worried. He knows the argument is happening, but he can't help but keep listening to the argument. Why aren't they stop? He's crying. He thinks to himself, but he can't do anything as he keeps listening in on the argument. Suddenly, someone walks out of their car, noticing they hit something. The person is Stefan. He walks out of the car and is met with a terrible sight. Stefan is horrified of what he sees, for he knows it's one of his best friend's sons. He doesn't know what to say. He's in pure shock as he looks at Bavsty. He doesn't know what to do, but hope that Bavsty isn't hurt badly badly. However, it seemed it was too late and Babsy had been hit and killed by his car. Nope. Oh god, this can't be happening, Stefan says in shock. He didn't expect this at all. He tries his best to see if he can do anything for Babsy, but it's too late. Stefan now knows what he must do. He couldn't let Steve, he couldn't let Steve see what he had did. He just couldn't. He decides he must try to hide it before Steve sees what he'd done. So he tries to stuff Babsy in his truck and hide it. Meanwhile in the house, Jenny is upset at Baldy for being so mean and decides to go upstairs to her room. However, she has heard something outside her window. 
Stefan tries to hide Bavsty in his trunk. While Jenny hears something outside her window and goes to look and see what the sound was, Baldy and Ronnie are still arguing inside, not knowing what's happened outside. Jenny peeks out the window. She sees Stefan trying to shove Bavsty into his truck. What's going on? She says to herself, worried. She sees him trying to drive away with Bavsty hidden in the back. Jenny runs downstairs to tell Baldy and Ronnie about what she saw. Jenny says while running down, Baldy, Ronnie, you have to come see. I think Stefan is trying to hide something in the back of his car. And I don't know what, but I think it's Bavsty. Baldy and Ronnie go to look and see what Jenny is saying. However, when they go to look, they don't see anything. The car is gone, and so is Stefan. Baldy then says, um, Jenny, I'd love to believe you, but I don't see anything. Maybe you went to bed and was just dreaming? No, he was here just a few minutes ago. You see, I was listening to you and Ronnie bicker and argue when I heard something outside, so I decided to see what it was, and I saw him in his car, trying to hide Bavsty inside his car, and then drive away. Jenny explains, It was right there! She points to where she saw Stefan drive away with Bavsty hidden in the back inside of his truck. Baldy still doesn't believe Jenny and thinks she might be seeing things. He then says, I think you need rest. Jenny is visibly upset and says, Why would I lie about this? Jenny asks, confused. Stefan was here and he was hiding Bavsty in the back of his car. And then when I looked outside again, he wasn't there anymore and he was gone. I'm not crazy. I know what I saw. She explains. Ronnie looks at her with a concerned and worried face and says, Jenny, I know you're not lying. It's true, but why is Stefan hiding Bavsky in his car? What's he doing? Ronnie says, Baldy then interrupts Ronnie and says, I don't think you know what you saw. Baldy looks at both of them and says, what evidence do you have that Stefan was here and that he took Bavsky? For all we know, it was someone else or something else. I think Jenny just needs rest because she's seeing things. Jenny is a little upset that Baldy doesn't believe her and says, Fine, if you're not going to... Fine, if you're going to play that game, then fine. Jenny is visibly upset as she storms upstairs. Baldy sighs. Well, that was not pleasant. Ronnie sighs and says, yeah, that was not pleasant, but I think Jenny, I don't think Jenny was lying. Plus, I can't lie. You can't lie about something you actually see with your own eyes, Ronnie says. Jenny is now in her room thinking, why doesn't Baldy believe me? I mean, I saw what I saw. Maybe he thinks I was lying. I wasn't, though. She sighs and lays on her bed. Then a knocking sound is heard on the window. Jenny goes to her window to see what made the sound. Who is it? Whoever's knocking on my window, show yourself. She says to who is outside. The window is slowly opening. Ah, who's there? I didn't unlock the window. So who are you and why are you in my room? Jenny asks the person to reveal themselves to no avail. Hello? Who are you? Come out. Come out. Wherever you are. She says she looks around the room to see if she can find the person outside a window, but she doesn't see anyone in sight. Jenny gets upset and calls out to Baldy. Come quick! There's someone in my room right now! She exclaims as she waits for him to come and see if he can catch who's in her room. Please come see who's in here and who unlocked my window. She waits for Baldy to do something and catch a bad guy. But he doesn't arrive. Hello? Are you there? Why aren't you coming to help me? Is anyone here? She says as she starts to get worried. Stefan flies in through the window. Jenny jumps back. Well, what the? Who are you? How did you get in here? Why are you here? Why aren't you answering my questions? She exclaims as she stares directly at Stefan, hoping, she re hoping he responds to something she can understand. Stefan walks towards her. Well, well, Jenny girl. Jenny is getting terrified. Who are you? Why are you here? What do you want? I demand answers as to why you broke into my room. Jenny exclaims and demands answers with Stefan walking closer to her as she, she tries to back away and hide away from him as he walks closer and closer. 
Stefan is walking around Jenny and speaks again. Oh, did you really think you could tell on me? Jenny, if you told, I wouldn't be too happy about it. Jenny is terrified and too scared to say anything. She can only back into the corner. P -p Please, don't do anything to me, she says in fear. Her back is against the wall. She is scared for her life. Why am I still awake? I'm so tired yet I can't go back to sleep. I don't know why something's keeping me up. She says as her fear builds up. She stares at Stefan in fear. Stefan continues speaking. Jenny, this could be a whole lot easier if you didn't try and tell my secrets. I'll make you a deal. If you forget what you saw outside and not tell anything to, about me to anyone, I'll leave you alone. How does that sound, hmm? Jenny gets a little angry and says, No! I won't keep quiet! I'm going to tell everyone! You can't scare me like this and get away with it! Jenny stands firm. She knows that if she tells Baldy and Ronnie, then this guy will never hurt anyone or anything again. You can't tell me what to do. I won't be silenced. She stands firm. She won't be threatened into silence. Stefan then says, Is that so? Stefan's smile quickly turns into a frown and he grabs a dagger from behind his back. Get that thing away from me! You wouldn't do something like that. Jenny tries desperately to get away, but can't. But please, don't do anything to me. I'll do anything, but I don't want to get hurt, she says. Not wanting to get hurt and is scared that Stefan wants to use a dagger on her. Stefan then says, Too late. I don't trust you. And I can't have anyone getting in my way. I won't be found out. Jenny is scared as Stefan comes closer to her with a dagger. She's shaking and is terrified that she might get hurt. She can't do anything but try to plead with him to stop and not hurt her. But please, don't do this. I can't keep a secret. I have to tell Baldy and Ronnie. But, but please, I don't want to get hurt. You wouldn't do this, right? You wouldn't hurt me. She pleads and begs as Stefan comes closer. Stefan then says, quietly, Goodbye. And lunges at Jenny with a dagger. Jenny is fighting back, but Stefan is too strong. Jenny tries to fight back, but Stefan is stronger. No, no, no! Please don't do this! Please don't hurt me! I don't want to die, please! I promise I won't tell. Please, I'm begging you. Jenny begs and says as the dagger is about to hit her. Steve hears Jenny's cries for help as he is in the bathroom. J Jenny, are you okay? What's going on? He hears Jenny crying and knows something is wrong. He runs out of the bathroom and runs to Jenny's room door. But the door is locked. Jenny cries as Stefan's dagger approaches her. I don't want to die, please. I promise I won't say a thing. I don't want to die, please. She is begging for him not to hurt her and promises she won't say anything. Jenny is scared that this is it for her. She may not live. She may not tell anyone about Stefan. I'm begging you, please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. P but please, don't hurt me. She continues to beg and plea as Steve continues to try and open the locked door. It doesn't work, though. Stefan is too strong for her. Steve continues to try, but fails to open the door. As he hears Jenny yelling and screaming, Steve's heart races. Jenny? Jenny, is that you in there? He asks. Please, please open the door. He tries opening the door, but to no avail. And he's starting to worry about Jenny's safety. Please, if you're in there, open the door. I can't get it open, he tells her. But we can talk about why you locked the door later. But now, for now, we need to fix that. Steve continues to try and open the door. Everything is silent. Steve stops trying to open the door. Jenny? Jenny, is that you? He asks. He's worried as he hears nothing from her. Please, please, I don't want anything to happen. Please answer. Steve is confused. Then, what's going on? He asks, please answer. He continues to ask as he doesn't know what to do now. In Jenny's room, the door opens slowly. Jenny is lying on the floor and Stefan is nowhere to be seen. Steve slowly opens the door and enters inside. Jenny? Jenny? Jenny, are you alright? I thought I heard you screaming, but what happened? 
Steve asks. He sees Jenny lying on the floor and gets scared and concerned for her safety. Please be all right, he says as he walks towards her to see if she's okay. She has been stabbed by a dagger and is bleeding out onto the floor. A dagger is left on the floor. Oh my god, what happened? Steve asks. Jenny, oh god. She doesn't look okay, please. I need to help her, Steve says. Jenny, come on. You can't die, please wake up. He says as he kneels down to Jenny to wake Wake up. Wake up! You can't die, please. We'll get you some help. You need to live. Come on, wake up. He says, trying to get some response, but gets none. Jenny! No! Not another one, no! Steve is crying. Ronnie and Baldy walk in. Baldy looks concerned and scared. What happened? Is that Jenny? Is she okay? Baldy asks. What happened to her? He repeats. I don't know. Steve says. She just lays there unresponsive. I'm going, I'm going to check her pulse. Ronnie says as he rushes in places his hand on Jenny's heart. No, 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 no. He says in fear and shock. She doesn't have a pulse. Ronnie says. Jenny speaks up. Also, Bafsty has gone missing as well. Baldy is even more worried. That's right. He's been missing all day. Now Jenny's dead. What's going on? Baldy asks, scared. This looks like it was done purposely. There was someone that broke into her room. I tried to open the door to check if Jenny was in there, but it was locked. Steve says to Ronnie and Baldy. What? what? How would someone even do something so evil as to kill Jenny? Baldy asks. Who would do such a thing to someone so innocent? She never did anything to any anyone. She never did anyone any harm. Steve is looking more sad and says, It seems we lost them both. He cried. Baldy and Ronnie look devastated. We lost them both, Baldy says, almost tearing up. I can't believe it. She was too nice. She never did anything to anyone. Baldy says, I don't even know how someone could do something like this. He comments, We need to get help. They can't get away with doing something so evil, he says and looks at Ronnie. Steve is now walking through Hiretown Graveyard. Baldy and Ronnie follow behind. Steve's still upset and devastated over the loss of Jenny and Bafsty. This is unbelievable. This never should have happened. Baldy says. It's so unreal. He says. Steve finally reaches the graveyard. And they all look at the tombstones. She always wanted to visit this place. But. Steve says. As a tear runs down his face. Poor soul. She didn't deserve this. Baldy mumbles in sadness. As he looks at the tombstone, this never should have happened. He says, she was too young. This is heartbreaking, Ronnie comments. Jenny, why'd this have to happen? Jenny, why did this have to happen? Baldy says. There's no way in the world. This, the world is this cruel. This is impossible. He says, Steve looks at all the tombstones. Poor girl. We didn't even get to see her succeed, but don't worry, your spirit lives on, he says. She's watching over us right now as we speak. Baldy, Ronnie, and Steve see Jenny's tombstone. Baldy reads the tombstone. Oh my god, please, no. Why did this happen? Jenny wasn't a bad person. She never should have died. Baldy comments and is holding back tears. Why did it have to be her? He questions. Ronnie looks over to his left and sees Bafsty's tombstone. No, no, no. It was only a little while ago when we lost him and now her? He says in a sad tone. Poor Jenny, he comments. After a while, they walk home. After they get home, the place feels more silent than normal. Baldy, Steve, and Ronnie all walk home in silence. Each are thinking about what happened and feel terrible and sorry for their loss. Each walk in the house 
each walk to their rooms. They all close their room doors. Everyone is silent. Everyone is long. Everyone is sad and grieving in their own separate rooms. Baldigane wonders what's going on. Everyone sits in their bed, depressed and sad. Baldigane sits alone in his room. What's going on? He asks himself silently. He can't tell. He can tell that something is going on. He can build attention in the house. He knows something is going on, but he can't seem to figure out what exactly. He continues sitting in his bed and looking up at the ceiling, wondering, 